on this episode of Ghost Hunters International. The team travels to Austria to investigate the site of judgment in history's bloodiest witch trials. It was a place of torture, actually. Hundreds of people died. Okay, okay, it's good. Yeah, 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 breath. That touched me. What will happen when Barry and Dustin encounter the forgotten souls of the witch's castle? The atmosphere feels charged in here. It does. Then, the team heads to a 16th century castle, home of a legendary evil countess. What was that? The table moved. Can they escape with Katerina's treasure? The treasure you hid, we're gonna find it. Or will her vengeful spirit claim another victim? What? It is. Look at the, all these mountains with snow caps. Fantastic. Hey, so GHI's first time in Austria. Brandy's going to give us some details on what exactly we're doing here. Hey, guys, we're headed to Moosum Castle, which is also known as the Witch's Castle. It was built in the 13th century. A lot of its history revolves around the witch trials that happened here. People were executed because they were claimed to have been witches. Now, this castle still contains the torture area with torture devices. Our client's name is Teresita, and the castle's been owned by her family since her great-grandfather, and she's been visiting ever since she was 14. She is terrified of this place. She actually dreads walking into the castle every time she has to. All right, here we go. Hi, there's you. Bro, nice to meet I you. I want to welcome you here in Mosham Castle. Thank you. Very good to have you here. In the 12th century, the people who built this castle were called the Mosheimer. It was a place for the archbishop, and it was a place of torture, actually. Hundreds of people died because of many witches' processes here in the castle in the 17th century. So my family bought this castle and now it's a museum actually so it's my task now to run this museum but i'm very afraid to be honest yeah to walk here on my own in the castle we're ready to come in and hopefully help you out and uh put away some of these fears and uh give you some answers can we start out by taking a walk around if you yes, can show us where this course. happens yep. Yep. after you please follow me here so here we are in the torture chamber and in the 17th century, many people died here because there was an archbishop, and he said that they're witches. And this was a reason of, to kill the women. What were the uh, methods of torture that they would use here? Many of them were hang, or two horses that were going into both directions. You were sort of cut off in the middle, yeah? And you can see here, for example, this was for the legs here, yeah? And here were the hands inside. Ich bin mit einer I was in a torture chamber with the school class, and I was standing next to the torture tools, when I suddenly realized I could feel human fingers in my hair. I turned around, and no one was there. So now we are in the hallway before the waiting room. I don't like to go into this room. This is a room where the people knew they will die. There's a hole in the floor. And they were falling down to the judging room. Of course, they were injured already. And then they had to go to the torture room. All right. Do you mind if we investigate in the waiting room? As long as I don't have to go in there. Fair enough. All right. Shall we head on? Yes, no problem. So this is the room of Tony. He was living in the 18th century, and he was responsible to imprison people. Whatever uh, happened to Tony? He died, and because of his age, died very painful. And I had somebody uh, from a tour here, and he said um, that he could see Tony sitting here in the corner, and he was talking to him. OK, all right, okay. I'll follow you on. This is the hunting room, and I don't like this room because the room has a bad energy. For example, I went with my father in the morning to open the museum, and he discovered, actually, that the guns you can see here on this rack 
They were upside down, so they're hanging in a different way. Everything was locked. Nobody could have been inside, yeah? And so nothing the system, had... no, nothing, yeah. All right, shall we head on? Yes. So now we're at the end of the tour. And it would be great if you could help me to find something with your investigations. Feel free to investigate wherever you like. All right, well, that sounds good. I'm gonna go grab the rest of the team, get set up, and get underway. With the spirit activity here, our client has got to the point that she's afraid to be in certain rooms. She doesn't necessarily feel comfortable all the time here. And that's unfortunate. That's why she brought us in. So what we're going to do is make sure that whether it's spirit activity or alternative explanations, that we don't leave here until we're able to give her some answers. What do we got, Barry? Um, number one is over in the dining room. Mm -hmm. Number two is in the front hall. Camera number three is pointed toward the guns we're said to have switched around. Mm -hmm. and camera number four is in the spinning room. All right, let's go to work. Maybe Princess Newt does number eight in the hunting lodge. So we've been told that somebody in here is able to manipulate these guns in this rack. It will make them change position. Archbishop. You are so confident in your judgment of women. And why are you hiding in this castle? What happened that made you want to cruelly torture and kill all these young ladies? Barry and I spent some time in the hunting lodge, and uh, we started a line of uh, EVP questioning that pertained to the archbishop, since he was instrumental in the torture of the women that were here. Come on, archbishop, we're all men here. Step forward. Are you afraid that you'll be judged harshly because of your misdeeds? Is that banging coming from your side? It sounds like it could be the room behind me. Banging coming from in there, doesn't it? Yeah. The atmosphere feels charged in here. Huh? It does. The oh, height just feels different here. Very. This fear feels charged in here. It does. You all right? <laughs> oh, no. Open that cell. <laughs> Dustin and I filtered into the hunting lodge where we conducted an EVP session. And we were brought to a room we thought we were hearing noises in. I went to the door. I, I, I tried the door. It actually felt as if it sprung open and was pulled from my hand. It did startle me for a second, and I must admit I did step back. Hello? Who's here with us? Don't say anything that would have been responsible for that. I don't see anything at all. There's not even a wind to cause a door to bang the way that we were hearing. There's no way anybody could have come up. No. No. And there's no way they could have got out. There was certainly nothing there that would have caused the door to do that. It's interesting, because we definitely had noise in there. There was. This gentleman known as Tony, like the warden uh. here, this was the bad man, the one that everyone feared in this place. Shouldn't be scared to step up and interact with us. EVP session, Tony, can you identify your presence? Why are you here? If we can't hear your voice, then perhaps you could respond with a noise. Whoa. You wanna go check that out? and 
bangs. You're popping off here. Both Brandy and I heard some strange sounds from an empty catwalk. It genuinely seems like there's someone else walking around here. But the question remains, what it seems like and what we can document are two very, very importantly different things. I need a voice. I need an image. If there's paranormal activity, I need to be able to show that it's paranormal because that's what our client brought us in for. That was loud. That was real loud. Here we go. EVP session, Dustin and Barry. Dustin and I came into the room uh, immediately below the clock tower where reports were given to us stating that objects were being moved. My friends and I have been spending a lot of time in here tonight, asking a lot of questions, trying to see if we can get any of you to respond. Your footsteps. I do. Any more footsteps? Is there anyone in the next room here? No. Okay. Can't pinpoint where they are, but you can hear anything is coming from above us. We were only there a matter of seconds and started our EVP session when we heard footsteps walking across the floor above us. What's above here? The stairs outside. We can go up and see. Yeah. Let's go. the room to the bell. That's what she always Feels like people are following her when she goes through white clock. That was the bell, the bell room. Yeah. It's locked. Well, at least we know nobody can be in there. Yeah, that's for sure. When all the doors are locked, no one could get in or out of those rooms. And uh, I am excited to see if anything has made its appearance on any of the equipment that we've been using. This is Joe and Ashley in the torture chamber. Wow. These devices could only talk. There was a report of activity of a female um, being seen in the torture chamber. So they would have the woman sit or stand here after they had already been beaten. I can imagine being shackled with these things. This is very disturbing just to think, like, being a female in around the same age group as all these women were when they were tried and tortured. It's terrible to know like your life is going to end in a yes, horrible way in a horrible horrible way and let's go in the chamber i address the female that resides here could you please come forward don't be afraid of us i'm a woman and i'm only here to help guten tag Show yourself. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I hear your breath. I hear your breath in here. In the corner. That touched me. Are there any women in here that were tortured? So were you accused of witchery? Ashley and I started an investigation in the torture chamber. There was a report of activity of a female being seen in the torture chamber. What? I felt like something touched me on the back. This is insane. It, it went like this. Mm. Joe was feeling like he was being touched on his back and I stood in his place in the same area. We need you to come forward again. Touch one of us. Pull on Ashley's hair. Are you male or female? Yes. It felt like as if someone was taking their finger on the back of my leg, like right above my knee, mm -hmm. kind of like twiddling. It felt like somebody was kind of running their fingers like right above my knee. And uh, it was definitely a strange sensation. This is Joe and Ashley in the torture chamber ending EVP session. This is the torture chamber. When Ashley and Joe told me their experiences, I wanted to go through with Ashley, see if we couldn't find some answers, some alternatives. And if there is something going on, see if we can document more of it together. Take a position over there. Okay. 
we wanted to try to relate to the women being tortured there. So I got down and put my hands through the stocks, and hopefully that would bring them out in some sort of way. EVP session. Ashley and Rob in the torture chamber. I'm down here. I'm locked, just as you were at one time. I can relate to you. Can you show yourself to us? Can you tell me how many witches are still present here? Did you hear that? What the heck is that? That's somebody. Let's go. We heard distinctly a male voice. But it definitely seemed like it was communicating. Moving now to the waiting room. We jammed out of there. We looked around. I didn't see anyone. There's a good chance that it may have been something in the waiting room. Is there anyone here with us in this room? What'd they bring you in for? Witchcraft or Satan worship? There's no justice here, huh? This place is filled with terrible history, and so why do you stay? The owner of this castle feels awful about the pain you went through. Obviously, you weren't really a witch. Rob, I heard something tap the wall right behind me. I heard two gentle taps a little bit above me in the corner. Ashley got two knocks in the opposite corner, but the same way that I was hearing the knocks. You know, is that paranormal? That's a tough call, but we had instruments recording audio. So was there voices, some messages besides the knocks? You know, time will tell. EVP session, end. All right, good effort tonight. Let's get back to Command Central and get packed up. I had some amazing experiences. This all happened in the torture chamber. I was definitely a little bit different, more intense this evening than it has been previously for me, but I'm very excited to see what comes out. Most Ham certainly was a large castle. <laughs> it was. Uh, and there was a lot of experience that we were having in all our different locations as well. Well, hopefully we've got some of that phenomenon caught. So let's just get uh, stuck into this. OK. Hey, guys. Going over the audio from the torture chamber, you and Rob, Ashley, you were down there. I I think someone else was down there with you. Wow. That is very clear. And you won't remember hearing anything no, like that? I just remember hearing faint voices and stuff, but in this, it's definitely clear. It sounds really close to the mic, too. That's for sure. There's no arguing that there is something there. Mm. OK, let's push on. OK. Guys, I think we have caught something in one of the images. You can clearly see the chair, but there's something else appears here. Oh, it looks like a figure. How are you doing? I'm OK, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. So how did it work? It worked very well. In fact, the torture chamber was the site of a lot of personal experiences. Joe and Ashley were investigating in the torture chamber. They went into one of the cells, and at one point, Joe feels some pressure on his jacket. Really? Ashley, later on, feels fingers moving up the back of her leg. That's not really <laughs> I want to feel. <laughs> yeah, a little unnerving, certainly. OK. It wasn't the end of the personal experiences. I was with Barry, and we were in the spinning room. Yeah. And clear as day, at one point, we heard a banging sound. There's that small door there, so Barry put his hand on it to go to open it, and it was as if someone pulled that door from the other side. OK. We were able to capture something for you. Rob and Ashley were over in the torture chamber. Mm -hmm. They were doing a series of questions trying to get what we call an EVP, which is imprinted voice that would be on one of the tapes. So I'm going to play that for you now. OK. We're all trapped in here together now. Yeah, I can hear that somebody else was there. It sounded to us like, it's me. 
Oh, yes. I can hear it's me. Now, the next one we're going to play for you, again, this is Ashley and myself in the torture chamber. I had heard a voice. We walk out, and as we're looking for this thing, another voice appears on the recording that we didn't hear on the time. It sounds like a German name. It's called Horst. And is that a man's name? Yes, it's a man's name. What we'd like to do now is we have some images here that I'll let them speak for themselves. Okay, good, yeah. The first uh, images that we're going to show you were taken with uh, the full spectrum camera. I was along with Barry. Um, we were just outside the door to that little room below the stairwell underneath where the clock tower is. I want you to take a look at this next photo. That's interesting. It almost looks like there's a small person or a man sitting, sitting there. on the chair, yeah. How does that affect you? What do you think about that? Uh, well, I always had the feeling that somebody's still in, in this room. And I always had that feeling that uh, people from this room were following me sometimes. So there's your proof as far as that room goes and what your feelings were. I'm glad if I will not see him, but it doesn't really scares me. Now let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really the opinion of the team that what the entities want is recognition. My recommendation to you, when you go to the torture chamber, say hi to whoever's there. Greet them. And I think that's a key point. The people that were here who were tortured weren't treated with any respect at all. And I think by you giving them that, you're bridging that gap. You don't have to be afraid here. OK, that sounds really good to me. <laughs> this has been a terrific investigation for us. Thank you so much for having us out here. And thank you, too, yeah? Hope right. to see you again. Thank All you right, very shall much. we go? Yeah. So I'm very glad that GHI was here in Mosam Castle. I can tell people who visit the castle that the castle is haunted, and I will tell them that I have some evidence now, and I'm not completely crazy. But I can also tell them that nobody has to be afraid of ghosts and that they just want to be recognized. We leave and Teresita feels good about being in the castle again. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely. She's got validation as to the things she was experiencing. Yeah. And we give her some ideas of how to cope with what's there. All right, man. Well, good work all around. Our job is done here. And it's time for us to go get the rest of the crew and head to the next one. That's it, man. Rock and roll. to Schloss Portia, the castle that was built in 1533 by the Salamanca dynasty. In the 1950s, it was actually purchased by the local government, and now it acts as a museum, an art exhibition hall, a concert hall. Our client's name is Dr. Prosh, and he's worked at the castle for over 20 years. He's heard footsteps, and he's seen objects move. Now, it's not limited to him. The local police department, they were dispatched at one point in time when the security system had gone off, and no one is there. They have no idea, you know, what was going on. And the mayor of the town has had his own experiences there as well. So we've got one here where the mayor, the police force, and a guy who's been there for 22 years have all had activity happen. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a good start. We'll find out. Doctor. Hello. Right. Rob. Hey, Dustin. I'm Hartmut Brash, and welcome to Portia Castle. Well, I think GHI are the absolute professionals in this field. Our hope that they're lucky enough to find out a lot more facts so that we maybe can explain what is going on within these old walls. This is a castle from the 16th century, so it's almost 500 years old. And it was built by a Spanish count, Gabriele from Salamanca. And this is also one of the stories which is bound to this castle because the last of this family, Katarina from Salamanca, is our ghost, as we say, from the legends. Has Katarina come back in any way? Any sightings or anything involving her? Sometimes at night in the courtyard, people saw her appearing and disappearing on the first, on the second floor, but mostly in the arcades. 
you be able to take us around, show us where exactly where everything's going on? Yeah, it would be my pleasure. Terrific. After you. This is the Count's room. Here on this painting, you can see Katarina Salamanca. We have a legend as she was the last of her family. She didn't want that uh, the jewelry and the money of her family came into wrong hands. And so it is said that she hired a handicraft to hide this jewelry somewhere in the castle. She killed him afterwards in the night with a wooden shoe. Nowadays, still nobody knows where the jewelry is. Mm -hmm. And this is also the room where we have the most activities. We had a, a very strange photograph in the Count's room. Uh, it was in the window. And there you can see the Countess. It looks like the Countess. And we made thousands of photographs also in the window. And there was nothing again. This is also the room where we're hearing the footsteps, not only above you or beneath you, but even in the next room. And the mayor was here for this as well. And the mayor was here. Also, we have gemeinsam mit einigen Journalisten. I was sitting with a group of people when we all heard a strange sound, like a chest being dragged across the floor. It was all very frightening, and no one had any explanation for the event. This is our 3D cinema. Here we have a team who came to make some investigations, and they caught a picture with two kids sitting here in the second row, just side by side. Barry's brought to the team some new photography techniques I think would really be valuable in here. Oh, yes. Well, we'll see what turns up. Okay. This third floor of the castle is the place where we had a false alarm, and the police came in during the night, and they heard someone walk in. Suddenly, the doors of the restrooms closed immediately. So they draw their guns because they were totally frightened, but nobody was ever there. Uh, this cannot be possible because there is only one way up, one staircase up. So now I showed you all the floors of our castle. We would appreciate very much that you can give us some results. All right, we'll grab the rest of the team, start getting set up, and uh, get to work, see what we can do for you. This would be beautiful. The alleged ghost of this castle, Katarina, murdered the man who hid her jewels in the castle. So are we dealing with a ghost who's still angry and is still trying to blame someone for the things that went wrong during their time here on Earth? I don't know. I don't even know if, if she's here at all, but we're going to certainly try and find out. All right, Barry. Camera's good to go, all right. What we have, camera number one, is covering the, the toy room. Camera number two is over the bell. Uh, the bell was said to ring. Um, camera number three is over in the, the main bedroom where reports of a woman has been seen. All right, perfect. Obviously, it goes up three floors. We need to be really aware of where everyone is if we start hearing the activity. Call the radio just in case. Let's all verify. Let's make sure the first thing we rule out is each other. OK. Let's head down, get the lights out, and let's get to work. OK. This is the big show. Yep. This is an EVP session. This is Rob and Dustin, and was come to be known as the Count's Room. Dustin and I went to what has been referred to as the Count's Room. This has been the epicenter of the activity in the entire castle. Katerina, I'm sure by this point you know why we're here. The treasure you hid, we're going to find it. And we're taking it. You beat your servant to death. You killed the man who helped you to hide your treasure. And after all that, nothing comes of it. Because Dustin and I are going to get it. We're going to find it. Did you hear that? Dustin and I went to the Count's room to see if we could capture um, EVPs. The treasure you hid, we're going to find it. Did you hear that? What was that? No, it was just me. Definitely good that we're using multiple pieces of equipment to see if we could capture activity. Those EVPs, if we did capture some, should be very easy to hear, and we can hopefully get that message. Oh, 
a good place to start. Ashley and I came up on into the attic uh, to run a series of EVP sessions. If you would approach this room and make some sort of noise or vibration, so that we know that you are here. Are you feeling any like sort of um, vibrations at all? Like it kind of feels like someone's walking. Turn the camera to the left a little bit. Just felt as if someone was standing right down my side. Go a little closer. I would really like to hear your voice. Did you? What was that? Is that you? No, what was that? Okay, was that here? That's what I thought. It was over toward your direction. Something moved. Okay. Yeah. It sounded like something was scratched. Now, during that particular session in the small room, there was something that sounded like a scratch on the wooden panel that came in from behind Ashley. Was that you who made that noise? If you're trying to be heard, we're giving you Just hearing something rustling over to my right hand side. There was a lot of noises um, that were happening around us. You could get the impression that uh, something was trying to draw us attention to it. There's a spirit here. I'm thinking someone who doesn't want to be reached or doesn't want to be known. Did you hear something there? I heard a creak. It says, look, footsteps. Let's check that out. We heard footsteps as if someone was literally walking in the next room over. It was very loud, very clear. Is there someone up here? It's your side, like it. Yes, hold on. It sounded like it was in here. It did sound like it was in here, yeah. But what we were hearing was footsteps on a wooden floor. We don't have wooden floors up here. Uh, but it was just so clear. It was It was very clear, though. It was too clear, I think. Rob? Yeah, go ahead, Mary. Is there any chance that you guys could walk past the lift? We just heard a set of footsteps, and we just need to make sure that there was no one down below. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take that walk now. All right, so... If the elevator's right here... The elevator's right here. your elevator. All right. All right, Barry, that's us. You've walked it and all? We can walk it again. No, I think that's OK, Rob. I think we have uh, defined that it definitely wasn't coming from your floor. All right, Barry. Wow. All right. That's just too weird. Joe and I were following up on voices and sounds Barry and Ashley had heard here on the third floor. Here we go. I'd like to call forth anyone up here. Stop tearing around and join us in this room. So you can see we're in the dark. And uh, therefore, shouldn't be much that you're afraid of. You can probably see us. I'm going to assume that was you. I didn't move the table. I thought you did. And I'm going to I take guarantee hands off the table. I guarantee I'm not in any physical way in contact. My knee's not against nope. it. I'm not touching it. The table moved. The table shifted as if someone had kicked it. If you were the one who moved this table, could you make two sounds? Is that your chair shifting? No. I heard what sounded like something scratching. We asked, can we get a sound of two knocks? Sound like two scratching sounds. I'm getting a real uneasy feeling. The hairs on my arms are standing up. Could you please come forward and give us a sign that you can hear us and understand us, please? Make a noise, move an object, whatever you like. What the hell was that? And one of the loudest noise sounds, bangs, I've ever heard just occurred in that room. 
It startled me. Rob jumped and I jumped. I don't know what was happening. It was crazy. Is it easier for you to communicate through knocks, noises? Are you still here with us? How are you feeling now, Joe? Um, fine. No more chills. Yeah. But what happened in that room, I, I could not believe it. It was something that never happened to me before. I'm still a little shaken from it still. Barry and I wanted to spend some time trying to recreate the picture of the two children that were seen in the theater. Barry and I will change the light sources a little bit, darken things down. Okay. So we need to really look over those pictures, compare it to the original, and, uh, and see if we have a logical explanation as to uh, what people are seeing there. All right, that's about it. Um, let's get half the team breaking the cameras down, other half shutting down Command Central. Joe Chin and I investigated on the third floor, and we had some experiences that kind of defy explanation at this point. Voices, objects moving. Um, it was intense. You know, I'm really excited to go back and find out what the team can find as far as evidence of that. We're just about to go into the analysis for Schloss Burchiam. When Ashley and I were on the third floor, there was a lot of things were happening in there, scratches, bumps, bangs. And I'm aware of other teams that were having experiences in there as well. Along with that, we're going to have to analyze some of the previous footage that was captured at the castle on photographs and try and compare with our photographs and understand at least what was going on at the time. Hey, Barry and Ashley. You guys were up on the third level, mm -hmm. and you hear some type of noise. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to listen and uh, let me know if this is what you heard. Right. Did you hear it? Yeah. Yep. That's it. Definitely. I remember I um, heard that very clear sound like it was coming from somewhere behind me. And it sounded as if something inside was just scratched inside. So what side of the room were you sitting on in, if you're entering the room? The if you're right entering side? the room on the right side, yeah. That's where I was sitting. Yeah, mm -hmm. see? That was the same chair that I was sitting in, and we heard something scratching. Yeah. Uh, well, Joe, you listen and uh, let me know if this is what you heard. That's exactly what I heard. Is it? Yeah. It's so weird. OK. Guys, I wanted to have a look at this. I'm, I'm just going over the photographs that uh, Dustin and I had taken because I wanted to see and, and compare against the, the original photographs. Now, what you see here in one of our shots, over here in the left, it looks like someone's sitting on the chair. Oh, yes. yeah. Wow. Doctor, how are you? Fine. And you? Very well, thanks. Very well. Yeah. I'm just waiting what you can tell me. I think we have quite a bit to tell you. Um, you know, what we do is when we come in, the first thing we want to do is look for alternative explanations. Mm -hmm. First one we're going to go over is the photo of the two children uh, nice. in the theater. All right, so here's the original photo that, uh, that you showed us there um, with what appears to be the images of two children within that theater. This was uh, our recreation of the children in the theater photo. OK, and this one's a little bit of a wider angle. If you look in this area here, in this far chair, it almost looks like there's a form sitting there. Oh, yes. So this should be the Lex? Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a picture of ghosts. OK, yes. Um, what it is is shadow playing tricks, the camera being on kind of a wrong setting. Mm -hmm. And as we demonstrated, there, you know, we can go and take pictures that seem like something paranormal that's really just our mind making sense of the darkness. Mm -hmm. I want to move on to the other photo from the, the count's room uh, where there's that image in the, uh, the window pane. Let's take a look at that original photo. You can kind of see on the curtain here uh, that we do have some light coming from within the room. And there's the image of a uh, face here, and also some people see some things behind there. For a simple replication, just for the image of the face here, 
As you can see, there's a darkened window. There's the ghostly image of my face. Because of the light that we had in the room, was able to show back up on that glass. So this causes a mirror effect in yeah. the glass. Sure. Yeah. You can't see Dustin. It just appears as if he's beyond the, the glass. You have this mirror effect, mm -hmm. as you say. And uh, we think that that's, again, the, the cause of that photo, not mm -hmm. paranormal, um, more reflection, lights coming in from the city. Okay, yes. So that's a lot of what we do. We, we look for alternatives. But at the same time, we did have some strange things happen here that we want to share with you. Oh, yes. Barry and Ashley went up to the third floor. One of the common techniques is, can I get two knocks? They had thought they had heard a scratch in response. They captured it. So we want to play that for you now and mm -hmm. let you give it a listen. Is that you, Ashley? Is that you? Yeah. I'll play it again for you at, uh, just in this area here. Did you hear that, that almost scratching sound? Yeah. So it got a little more intense in that room. Um, myself and Joe sat down at the table. What we want to do is show you the initial piece of tape that was captured with Joe from mm -hmm. the, the camera. You can probably see us. I'm going to assume that was you. I didn't move the table. I thought you did. This is some sort of uh, trying to get in contact. I would agree. So now we're thinking, OK, perhaps we're onto something. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to show you this tape. What happens is we're still sitting at the table mm -hmm. asking for these noises, asking for these bangs to just show us something's there. Certainly, we didn't expect anything like this. And I'd like to apologize for my language in advance. Make a noise, move an object, whatever you like. What the hell was that? Okay, this was heavy. <laughs> and what is this? What do you think? Well, this was the answer of the question. Of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we asked for the big noise, and we certainly got it. There wasn't any more evidence recovered from the room, but certainly this was, was enough to seem that something strange was going on. Throughout the rest of the investigation, uh, everything was really remarkably silent. I think that based on the evidence we collected, it seemed possibly paranormal in origin, although we wouldn't be able to come out and conclusively say the building is haunted. Yeah, um, well, uh, on the one hand, it's a pity that you couldn't prove our uh, experiences. Mm. But on the other thing, you found something. Yeah which is not the bad result, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> well, doctor, that's what we came for, and we're glad that you're happy with how it turned out. And, uh, thank you for your help, and uh, keep in contact. All right, take care. Thank you. I would say uh, what GHI showed me is a new step into this topic, because this was an experience we had never had before. Certainly some of those experiences definitely woke Joe and I up for the night, man. That was pretty intense stuff. And, uh, you know, that's the stuff that keeps fueling the passion, keeps it, good, keeps it exciting. Absolutely. It gives us a reason to stay out here. All right, well, that's it. Time to move on. That's it, brother. Rock and roll.